Okay, let's talk about the debt to equity ratio and company growth and see how that impacts the amount of debt or equity that we want to have. So if we look at the debt to equity ratio, growth implies significant equity financing even in a world with low bankruptcy costs. Thus, high growth firms will have lower debt to equity ratios than low growth firms. Growth is an essential feature of the real world. As a result, 100% debt, debt, uh, debt financing is suboptimal. So the ability of your firm to grow, and especially fast growing firms, they're going to have uh, a need for more equity financing. The debt will not keep up with uh, you know, a growing franchise such as Home Depot. They're going to end up with, uh, they're going to have some debt, but they're also going to need shareholder money. They're going to issue new shares as they uh, grow because the debt won't. Uh, won't keep up. In other words, they're so risky, the interest rates will be so high uh, that they will need more equity financing to keep the balance of the debt to equity. So they will be issuing more shares. Now, how the firms actually establish their capital structure is most corporations have a low debt to asset ratio. Changes in the financial leverage will affect the firm value. Obviously, we know stock price increases with increase in leverage and vice versa. This is consistent with the MM theory with taxes. So the more leverage, the higher the stock price because they, they're first you're signaling, we'll get into signaling theory in a minute, you're signaling that you're going to do well. In addition to that, there should be uh, more return if the shareholders believe that in the company, there'll be more return because it's highly levered. Uh, another interpretation is the firm signals good news when they lever up. Well, they lever up because, and we'll talk about signaling theory again in the future, they lever up because they feel that they're going to uh, do well, and they know that debt is another word for leverage. Uh, there are differences in capital structure across industries, of course, and the evidence, um, uh, there is evidence that firms behave as if they have a target debt to equity ratio. So they behave that way um, uh, because they don't want uh, to go too far off into either side. So they they like uh, some debt, some leverage that they're comfortable with, uh, but they don't want too much leverage so that they firm feel that the firm is at risk. Because all of a sudden, if your equity goes below a certain uh, amount, all of a sudden your bond covenants kick in and they want their money back and uh, there's all kinds of repayment problems and so on. So you definitely want to keep your equity uh, at a re reasonable level, uh, uh, paying particular attention to your bond covenants and uh, how much your shareholders are thinking how risky you are. Um, in addition to that, there's factors in the target debt to equity ratio. Taxes, obviously interest is tax deductible. Highly profitable firms should use more debt uh, so they, they could reduce their amount of taxes. Uh, but often at times they use internal financing because they are so profitable. Uh, types of assets, uh, the cost of financial distress, depending on the assets uh, type uh, the firm has. Uh, the financial distress and assets, if you have lots of heavy assets with a lot of debt on them, you can be in deeper trouble than obviously if you're an insurance company that has nothing more than offices and uh, computers, for example. Uh, compare that to a railroad or a, an aircraft manufacturing company you have lots of physical assets. Um, uncertainty of operating income, well, even without debt, firms with uncertain operating income have a higher probability of experiencing financial distress. So clearly if you aren't sure you're going to have sales next month, the difference being um, say PG&E, which is Pacific Gas and Electric, which is uh, an electric utility, I'm pretty sure everybody's going to use electricity next month, or say a car manufacturer, and if we have a recession, who's going to buy a car? Well, car sales could fall off a cliff, so there'd be considerably different uh, um, expectations in the variability of operating income. Uh, and then, of course, pecking order and financial slack. We're going to talk more about this uh, in, a, in a minute. Uh, theory stating that firms prefer to issue debt rather than equity if internal financing is uh, insufficient. Uh, so the first thing is to go borrow some money and add to your uh, bank account. The last thing you want to do is bring more owners in. Uh, more owners reduces your value of your stock. Bring debt in leverages the company up so when it does well, you do even better. So your natural way to increase uh, the amount of um, capital in the, comp in, the com in the company is to bring on debt before equity. Uh, so that's enough for the target debt to equity ratio and so on. Uh, let's move on. We've got one more section here. Uh, maybe two more sections here. We'll keep going.